Okay, hi people. We're going to continue with our next subtopic which is indices, sets and logarithms. Okay. Them, maybe. Alright, so these are the learning outcomes that you should be learning and gained. Especially at the end of the lesson, you should be able to express the rules of the indices, explain the meaning of a set and its conjugate, perform algebraic operations on the sets, as well as explain the laws of logarithms. And then, last but not least, changing the base of logarithms using the formula. Okay, so our first thing to be pondered is about indices. So as you know before, indices is any number with the form of A and N. So what is A? A is your base, which A must be made up of real numbers. As well as n is either power or being called as index also. So n can be any integers or remember what is this? Rational number. Okay. So a power of n means that a bin times n times altogether. Okay. An important thing is you should know that 8 power of 0 is always 1. 8 power of n means that if you bring along, you bring towards the bottom of A, the power will be changing the sign. The same goes with this. Huh? Alright. So now, let's look at what happened here. Rules of indices. So rules of indices, there are a lot, but uh, particularly, we're having three main rules and regulations which are the multiplication the division and what will happen if you power up an index okay so let's say if you have two index numbers with same pa same base by different powers you can just plus them so times is always becoming plus the power. Meanwhile, the division should become minus the power. And then, if you power up something like n, so it's always just time with the power that. Okay? It's different huh? between the same base been multiplied together compared to an index being power up. Okay. And then this just follow through. If you have like a bit power of n, they are actually a to power of n, b to power of n. So that's why, for example, 6, you, you can actually separate them to be 2 times 3. That's why both are having power 2. So that's why you have 2 to the power of 2 and 3 to the power of 2 here. The same goes with this. Huh? Okay. And then whenever you take it up, the indices, the power always being changed the sign. Okay. So next. What happen if you have a rational index here? Is actually some kind of uh, root of the base. So let's say if you have a to the power of 1 over p is actually the root of a by p. Yeah? Okay. So let's say if you have 8 to the power of 1 over 3 is actually the cube root of 8 which is 2. Lah. Okay. So same goes with the one at the bottom there. Alright. So note how the rational power related to the root itself. Okay, so let us try this example here. So if we have 8 to the power of x times by 2 to the power of 2x, we just have to simplify guys. So simplify means you have to note first the common base of them. So the common base for this is actually base 2. So that's why 8 is 2 to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 2x, just make it like that, remain it. And then 4 is actually 2 to the power of 2. So now we're having the same basic base, which is 2. So that's why 
whenever you have a multiplication just plus whenever you have a division just minus all right so at the end you would have 11 x the same goes with the right one since you have 15 and 3 both can be cancelled out being 5 now you would have 4 power 4 over 3 minus with 1 because we have the same base here which is x so finally because 4 over 3 minus 1 is 1 over 3 so don't forget your hashtag here okay so now what we happen to example 2 so example 2 ask you to actually simplify this one so as usual use your rule that been known before so that's why we can actually expand this to be s power of negative 3 as well as y power of negative 3 there. and then accordingly use the same base so whenever you have divide you have to change it into minus for the power and then uh, that would be your simplest answer so it could be like this or you can express that as a fraction also all right so next example three so example three the same thing but a little bit challenging here what will happen if you have 1 over 3 to the power of negative n 27 of 12 of 3 n and then negative 3 to the power of n okay so now just let 1 over 3 to be 3 to the power of negative 1 27 is 3 to the power of 3 negative 1 can be taken out power of n and then 3 to the power of n also so what happened next would be we can actually take out negative 1 to the power of n. Okay, why is it becoming negative here? Because n is actually odd z integers here. So odd z integers should be z positive is 1, 2, 3 and so on. But we want the odd only. So the odd will be 1, 3. 5 and so on so whenever you have power of an odd number positive odd number that should be negative also all right so now we would have everything to be in n negative 1 times by negative n is actually n so that's why n plus 9 n n plus n as well so that should be our final answer which is negative 3 to the power of 11 n because they are being summed up together. So what happened to this? Try to do it by yourself. I'm giving you the final answer here. Alright.